What's up? How are my below average sized giants doing today? It's Chris here. We're going to talk about this big beautiful helipilot right here. Uh, just just noting really quick, just the uh, the animation of the helipilot is actually pretty beautiful. Uh, great great job, Ninja Kiwi, on, uh, on designing a, a wonderful looking tower. Uh, the movement is very fluid overall. I mean, the, the only weird thing is, is when you do end up popping down a bunch of zero zero uh, helipods, they don't end up jumping on top of each other very much. Which, in my opinion, is. looks good, but makes the gameplay worse. So it's, it's like one of those weird things, but if you have all these helipods kind of jumbled up together, especially if you get higher level helipods, you can't get them right where you want them to be. Um, but I, it makes sense, you know, we can't have a million heli pilots all with, all on top of each other, it'd be a little too ridiculous. So, <clears throat> so it's just an interesting thing to note right there. As a 0-0 zero -zero heli pilot, he's actually a pretty reasonably, reasonably good tower over here. We send out 909, oh, I got a weird number over here, man, we're gonna do, uh, let's do, uh, ugh, what are we gonna do, let's do zero spacing. <clears throat> we, we just do 500, that's fine, we'll do 500 reds really quick. We're notice the amount of pops that we get over here. It's going to go 8, 16, 24. What are we getting over here, man? We're getting 8 pops per shot. So that really means is we got 2, two uh, barrels, basically. Each one of these barrels is going to shoot a dart. They're each going to do 4 pops. So it's interesting that he shoots 2 darts as a 0, zero tower because that means if we did send out a single blue balloon, one, uh, it would only take one um, dart for this guy to just go take it down to nothing. And that's sort of interesting to note right there. Uh, it's not a huge game changer or anything like that, but it's something to note if we're really going to get intense about how good this guy is. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Helipilot as a low-level tower, mostly because there is a monkey knowledge upgrade that allows you to build your first military monkey for half price. And if you are able to build a Helipilot as a 0-0 tower early on in Impoppable or something like that, it might be a game changer here, guys. So I actually haven't done the math on if, you, if that's allowed or not, or if that's even possible or not. But it might be possible for at least hard, and that can just be really nice. Just pop one of these guys down, let him uh, follow mouse, and just run around the map and just do some popping power early game so we can farm and stuff like that. Just a cool idea to think about here, guys. Moving on to quad darts. So now we do the same thing here, guys. Now we've got four darts which each have four popping powers, so we can do 16 pops total. Keep in mind, again, that if we just sit on something like a yellow, if we were super duper accurate with our darts, which we're not, we could take the yellow down to nothing with one shot. But at the same time, if we did send out 999 reds, um, if we could do the perfect amount of damage here without missing it all, we should do 16 pops per shot. So, let's see if we miss it all. Yeah, looks like we're going to miss with at least one dart. Oh, well, there we go. We finally got it, man. But we're missing with one dart most of the time because he sort of sp he sort of attacks in like a, a pretty wide cone, I guess. A pretty wide box that he shoots in. He doesn't shoot down on a... He's not super duper accurate with his thing. Just sort of shoots it randomly. That can affect our popping power for sure. Because that means uh, we can't just put him down on like a straight line here and just have him shoot down and pop every single balloon no matter what. Now, of course, these are red balloons, so once we get to the higher tier balloons, we should be able to hit these guys just a little bit easier with our darts, but it still doesn't mean uh, we're going to get the, the max out of every single one. Uh, moving on to Pursuit. Well, okay, so this is sort of goofy. They went from just like adding some extra darts to now giving us a targeting priority or a way to, to move our heli pilot in the second tier top path. That's sort of goofy, but okay, I guess if they want to do that, that's fine. Doesn't increase our popping power at all, but now what we have is we have the ability to just chase around the balloons the entire map without having to control it. So this guy's just going to run around and slowly take down all the balloons. He's, uh, he's pretty reasonably quick over here, but you can see he's not quite as quick as the pink balloons. They can escape his wrath over here, just as a regular 2-0 uh, uh, heli pilot. I will say that Pursuit is reasonably smart, but not smart enough. Uh, I wish that it was a little bit smarter, especially because the Pursuit upgrade is going to lead into Razor Rotors, and those two just don't mix well at all, man. These are some of the worst combinations of upgrades that you can get. In fact, buying a $1,500 Razor Rotors is, uh, after Pursuit is like just wasting the Pursuit money. Which is kind of upsetting. I don't know why Ninja Kiwi, you know, decided to make that, 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 like, that as the same path. It would make more sense, uh, for right around, um, uh, for the balloon sendback, or the, the whirlwind attack. I forget what it's called. What's it called? Uh, no, that's not it either. What the heck is it called? What is it? 
downdraft. That's what I'm looking for. For the downdraft upgrade, it would make more sense for that. But uh, no, they didn't decide to do that. They decided to put Pursuit on the Razor Rotors over here, which I just absolutely hate. And in fact, I would even love to keep it just to change that, man. That's just me, though. You know, I don't, I don't control them. I, uh, I basically, what I say means almost nothing anyways, so it doesn't matter. But the problem is, is, if I did send out something like a bunch of, let's just do like 150 rainbows or something like that, but with like two spacing. Now, Razor Rotors is not a bad upgrade. It should be Razor Rotoring through a lot of these balloons. But we're going to chase in, like, a weird direction in a lot of situations where our, our Razor Rotors don't actually get a good amount of popping power over here. He's actually doing an okay job for right now, actually, the way he's chasing. But it doesn't always work that way. Uh, especially if he gets confused by different layers of balloons coming out and all that stuff. He ends up not doing the max amount of popping power that he can do. So... Uh, personally, I don't like it that much. It's not horrible um, to leave my pursuit and get the razor road. But at the same time, I just don't find it worthwhile to get. So, if it did send us something like some Moabs or something like that, you can see him actually go to town over here with these razor rotors and everything. He actually does a decent amount of pops over here against Moab class balloons. And and you know what? Even in this testing phase, it looks like it's doing better than it actually would in a real game. That's the sad thing too, uh, because I've tested him out in a bunch of real games, and he ends up just being really, really goofy overall. Moving on to Apache Dark Ship, same exact thing, guys. Even further, uh, worse, I guess. But I sent out some rainbows up in here. You can see this guy kind of be goofy with his missiles and his regular darts, and he's like missing all over the place. Like, what the heck is this guy doing over here? We finally found like a good area where his explosions are actually doing good amounts of damage. But overall, that's not usually the way it goes down. Now, this is a this is a really solid tower up here. We got almost twenty thousand dollars to get this guy going, and uh, we can't pop very many balloons at all. We end up missing a lot with our popping power right here, guys. A lot. Compare this to something like, I don't know, a Spectre, how about? You know, I, I do. I'm going to build a monkey ace here because I, I, I feel like it's important to note this. Watch this, guys. It's at 150 ceramics now. Uh, yeah. So, okay, well, you know, that E might just mean Moab popping power. So let's just send out, like, I don't know, how about 25 Moabs. We're going to compare that to the Spectre. And now these are very similarly priced towers. We're going to take the uh, uh, balloons down to nothing. He's, he, of course, he is missing a little bit as well, but uh, we're going to take these uh, bugs down to nothing, you know, very close in the map over here. Compare this again to going back up to a spec uh, Apache Dart Chip, which is about the... Actually, is it more expensive? More freaking expensive. We got this guy in pursuit. We're going to let him go to town. We're actually going to move him... Uh, move him over here first, just so I don't get any wasted time over here. Put him back on Pursuit, and we're going to send out uh, 25 Moabs. You can see, okay, we're doing an okay job against the Moabs. He's being really goofy against the balloons. He just can't seem to pop them zebra balloons or anything like that. The Moabs are just going to, like, sneak through our freaking defense. This is more expensive than the Spectre over here. I don't really see a point for the Apache Dark Ship at this point. I think the biggest issue for him is the fact that he doesn't have a good amount of uh, black or zebra popping power. They, the missiles don't affect those balloons. If they got rid of that weakness, it could actually be worthwhile. I compare that again to 150 ceramics, which we sent out earlier, which the Spectre obviously easily annihilated, and this guy's gonna lose, uh, like, hardcore against these things. So the Apache Dart Ship, even though a favorite in B-55, is gonna end up being just a weak piece of poop right now, as far as I'm concerned. It may end up getting buffed in the future, and that's where this guide may become obsolete at some point, but at this point, it's just, meh. It's just smurf a derf a darp a derp. So moving on to Apache Prime, so now we're finally, oh man, fifth tier towers. This guy's got to be freaking amazing up in here. So let's send out those 150 ceramics again. And uh, what we're noticing is uh, he's not that good. Now this is a fifth tier tower. I mean, he's worse than a Spectre. He's a fourth tier tower for cheaper. Like, and he's still struggling against these ceramics. How about against, oh no, let's do just, let's just do the 25 mobs like we did before. This is where it changes a little bit because we are really good against the Moab Glass Balloons. The problem is the balloons inside. <clears throat> so if we just went around attacking the Moab Glass Balloons, we'd be much better. But because we have to chase around the balloons and everything like that, we're still going to lose uh, further back than even just the 4th tier Spectre over here for this 5th tier Apache Prime. I would like to mention that I don't have faster firing or anything like that, but I didn't have that for the Spectre either. So... Overall, the Apache Prime tends to be a little bit weak because of, again, of that lack of balloon popping power. It's mostly that lack of black and zebra popping power. Uh, because he shoots so many different things. I think he shoots, like, a, a, a plasma beam. He shoots out some missiles. 
and uh, the plasma beam tends to not really go through the balloons very easily or very well. Plus, uh, when he's on pursuit, he tends to miss a lot more. So when you're using an Apache Prime, if you are going to use this guy, uh, it's, it might be better to lock him in place or put him on... Uh, uh, patrol or something like that in the front part of the map. And if you do send out like 25 BFBs over here or something like that, you can control this guy, let him take down the Moab class balloons, and then the balloons, you can worry about those guys later. But you can tell, look at the Moab class damage and everything. Yeah, obviously, freaking rock solid over here if we're attacking the right balloons. So make sure you're using them correctly, and you're going to obviously get a lot more pop apart. Plus, you can tell when my missiles are kind of like chasing instead of going against the grain, we actually do a much better job. So controlling him again against 50 ceramics over here, 150 ceramics over here. We're going to just kind of leave him on the screen right here. Let him just do a little bit more chasing over here. Get him in like a nice solid spot instead of just leaving on pursuit. You see we're doing a much better job against the ceramics overall. Um, still not perfect or anything like that, but definitely just something to note. Uh, leaving this guy in pursuit may actually be a bad upgrade for the 4th and 5th tier heli pilot. Moving on, we gotta talk about the uh, middle path over here. So now we got bigger jets. Okay, so now we move faster. That's it. That, that's all we get. We were, real, we're really fast, though. We're actually, we're pretty solid, man. Uh, you know, we can, uh, we can test this out. We can do a little race. Race against time here with our two heli pilots. We'll start them both on the uh, right side of the screen. I'll click on the left side. And we're going to watch him go. Race, 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 race. And uh, it's about 25% faster, so maybe 33% faster. He's pretty decent overall. Um, it's not a super duper expensive upgrade, but like we're probably not, it's not even that important for us overall. I mean, we usually don't have too many issues chasing the balloons in the first place. We're usually not chasing pink balloons all over the, over the map or anything like that. So almost like a worthless upgrade to me. And then IFR is the same thing. It's like, okay, we got we need camo detection. Obviously, for some of our towers, we're going to need this thing. But because the Monkey Village uh, camo detection isn't all that bad, usually I just wait for that Monkey Village camo detection and rely on my camo detection with other random cheaper towers like the Ninjas, the Dart Monkeys, and your heroes and such. Moving on to Downdraft, though. Oh, you know what? Last thing I wanted to talk about really quick for the top path. Helipilot, I kind of forgot about this, I'm sorry, is that, uh, as I was saying, the pursuit doesn't always work out perfectly, so if you want to, you can, like, lock him in place in a, uh, position somewhat like this, and, uh, he tends to do just a little bit better, so if I send out, like, uh, I don't know, some yellows or something like that, uh, you're gonna see we can easily just annihilate these balloons over here, we can do it, uh, some more pinks and stuff like that, like, uh, we, we're, we're a solid, um, we're a solid tower with our Razor Rotors. Uh, even if I go higher than that, let's see if we can take down Whites. Oh my god. Uh, so we finally hit our limit over here. And if you look at the pop count, it's not perfect, but again, it's a, it's a decent tower over here. And we're doing a lot better job now that we're just locked in place, rather than following all the balloons on Pursuit and stuff like that. So, uh, that's just something to note as well. A lot of notes today, guys. Take your notes, man. Take your notes on this video. There's a lot of them to talk about. Now we got the cam text. Now how about downdraft? Well, downdraft, the basic way you want to use this guy is against the higher tier balloons. Rainbows, ceramics, uh, balloons that come out of Moab class balloons, round 40 and stuff like that. This is got this is gonna be a wonderful addition to your team. And uh, the way he works is if I did send out a bunch of ceramics over here, he can just whirlwind them back to the front over here. It doesn't last forever, but for a pretty decent amount of time over here, we could just send back all these ceramics back to the front. And to me, that just seems really awesome. But of course, on most levels, we're not gonna be fighting a crap ton of ceramics over here. And also his popping power is quite low. You can see, you know, the amount of pop and power we're getting is, is actually almost terrible. So, uh, it's just a zero zero heli pilot pop and power. But we do send these guys back, which can make all of our other towers do a better job. So we're turning into basically a support tower right now. Um, and that makes sense because of the, the next upgrade, the fourth and fifth tiers, are both just crazy support towers. So for the fourth tier up in here, we get two abilities. We get the ability to move towers and the ability to get extra money and extra hearts or extra lives. Um, I believe on Impoppable, you cannot get any more than one life, so this thing is going to be worthless. On Chimps mode, same thing, you're not going to get any extra lives, so don't even try it on Impoppable or Chimps mode. But you can move your towers on those game. I believe you can move those towers. Ooh, that's actually a good idea. I never thought about that. It says no selling, but doesn't say no moving. Ooh, interesting. Maybe an interesting tower to use on Chimps mode to get our positioning a little bit better over here, guys. Oh, yeah, look at that. Do a little bit of swirly whirly gumdrop action right here. Nice little, nice little support, Chinook. Good little buddy. So, how, what about the money here? What are we, what are we getting over here, man? You get a thousand bucks. All right, he's decent. He gets a decent amount of change over here. 
As far as moving towers goes, there's certain towers that you can and can't move. You can't move the military monkeys. You can't move the uh, 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 super monkeys. You can't build uh, move any of the support monkeys over here. So the banana farm, spike factories, and uh, villages. You cannot move any of these guys. Actually, excuse me. You can't move them once you get up to higher level, guys. I believe one is or something after. You can. You just can't move the temple. Okay. I think they might have changed that, actually, because I tested it out before, and that's not what happened. But anyways, you can't move the temple, because obviously uh, that would be ridiculous. Cannot redeploy this tower. But you can move even weirder towers like the submarine, the dart, uh, the buccaneer, and, of course, almost everything else on the screen. Tax shooters, cannons, ice towers, blah, 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 blah. You can move all of those guys as you see fit. You can tell what you can move based on the little blue... Uh, thing around it. I actually thought you could move spike factories out. Like, can we move banana farms? Okay, finally. So the buildings, the buildings, the monkey village, and the banana farm both can't be moved. But uh, most of the other towers actually can, all the way up into the temple uh, for this uh, the super monkey. And I believe that means that even these like other weirder legends of the knights and stuff like that can be moved as well. Which I thought we couldn't move. That's cool. Definitely going to make this uh, sort of interesting later on. So let's get rid of all that garbage, and let's rebuild our uh, fourth tier over here. So the thing about them is the first crate you're going to get is going to be the money. The second crate you're going to get is going to be the hearts. So uh, this time we get $1,700. So a fairly wide uh, uh, amount of money that we can get. I believe it's between 1000 and $2,000, though. Uh, I actually did not do a, a bunch of tests before I started this video. I apologize for that. Um, I did do that for the the uh, fourth tier sniper, but I did not do it for this guy. But uh, for the second one, you're going to get some hearts up in here. And we're going to get 53 extra hearts. That's actually a pretty reasonable amount of hearts right here. And the, I mean, the abilities do take a little while to come back, but we don't need to get hundreds of thousands of lives over here. It's just a fun little way to get a, a, a crap ton of lives, guys. So after I do this uh, chunk of change right here one more time, I'm going to get all the way up to a fifth tier, and then we get a third ability. So this guy is cool. Now keep in mind, this guy is not going to get any better as far as popping power is concerned. He still does the downdraft part, but nothing else. So let's see what we get for money. 1683, okay, as, as expected. So let's speed him up to special pop -eration. So now we get three abilities out of one tower. That is ridiculous up in here, guys. What we've got is uh, uh, the ability to still move towers. We've got our hearts and our money, which are actually going to be increased by the fifth tier. And we've also got this guy, the, the, the Special Poperations Marine, I guess. So here's some lives. We get 121 lives, about double of what we're getting from the uh, uh, the fourth tier over here. But what the Special Poperations does is we want to pop him down uh, right when some balloons are coming out. So let's do some rainbows. Let's do 150 spaced rainbows right here. We're going to pop this Special Poperations down. We're going to see this guy go to town. What we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of pierce happening over here. He doesn't last forever, but we're seeing a lot of pierce. He does a pretty good amount of damage over here. He's not so great against mob class balloons and BFBs and everything, but still not bad. Um, overall, actually, I used to think he was pretty bad, but I don't think he's too terrible because of that whole damage slash layer thing that he does. He's basically very similar to a crossbow. Uh, a crossbow monkey. Because he does both pierce and damage at the same time. So, I like him. I think he's fun. Uh, will I use him all that often? Well, probably not. But at least he's there for uh, a little bit of help that we might want in this game right here, guys. 3,583 bucks. Man, nice. Again, probably about double of whatever we're getting for our fourth tier here. Um, so, that's the, uh, the fifth tier over here. He's overall a solid tower, but... He's, he's a support tower. So, you gotta decide, do you want extra lives and some extra money? Um, then a little bit of extra damage, or do you want to go for something that just like you know is going to be good over here? Uh, so let's talk about the bottom path now. Sorry about that, guys. I still wish that I didn't when I move this around like this. It didn't hold it down because I'm like, I, you know, I'm moving it around. You know, what the heck. So now we got faster firing and then faster darts, which you may actually be confused about. In fact, I was confused about this for my boomerang, but. Uh, I do want to mess it up for this time. It looks like, to me, what would normally happen is if you have faster firing and then faster darts, you'd be like, okay, well, I'm shooting faster, and then I'm shooting even faster. Kind of like a attack shooter. But that's not the case. Faster firing makes it faster attack speed. Faster darts makes the darts propelled faster through the air. So we're not getting any extra popping power for this thing, 
we're just making our darts like miss less, I guess, because we shoot faster through the air. It's the only thing we're doing. Um, probably not worth it in most situations. I mean, it's it's not super duper expensive, but really what we're doing is we're spending that little bit of money to get to the third tier upgrade, the Moab Shove. Now this is a really interesting upgrade for the Heli Pilot because we can stun a single Moab forever. We can stun multiple Moabs for a long freaking time. So if I do uh, uh, a single Moab here, I'm just going to buy Pursuit for the ease of it. Not only do we can stun them, we can actually send them backwards over here. You can see the Halipal's actually do a pretty decent amount of damage against this Moab class balloon, and eventually we will take it down to nothing. The balloons are a different story, man. He's not quite the balloon pop and power tower that we that we need and hope and desire. He's not terrible, but a single single Moab Chef Halipal just took down a, a Moab down to nothingness, which is pretty solid. If we send out two Moabs over here, he doesn't infinitely stun them, but if you notice, just like beep, 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 just hopping back and forth, man, and uh, we will eventually pop uh, both of them. The interesting thing is that um, if we do it this way, we're actually able to kind of stun the Moab for a pretty gosh darn long time and actually pop almost all the balloons inside, too. Not quite all of them, but definitely interesting. He can still do this against BFBs and Zoma Gods as well, but though not quite as um, amazing against these Zoma Gods and everything. We'll do one Zoma God because he stun this guy forever. Let's see, once he actually gets on the screen here, man. No, not quite, but at least he does a little bit of stunnage over here. Uh, against the BFB, though, full on stunnage, baby! Moabs and BFBs, we get stunned forever. We're stu well, BFB is really. Let's do two BFBs over here. Um, you see the insane amount of slowdown we can get on these double BFBs, and even he's going to take both of these guys down by himself. So a great, great Moab Pop and Power Tower here. Once you get to the big, beefy, grouped Moabs and grouped BFBs, he's not good anymore, but for around 40 to around 60 or 65 plus, he's going to be a solid addition to your team. Moving on to the Comanche defense. Now, we basically are doing the exact same thing here, and I actually don't like this fourth tier tower over. He doesn't seem to be all that effective. What happens is, is a random ability comes into play where three extra helipilots come to help us out in popping the balloons. So, I'm going to delete these balloons. We're going to set another BFB over here and uh, see if we can get these uh, these three extra helipilots to come out here. I don't get to control them. Actually, they may not come out because... Will they come out? I don't know. It's sandbox mode. Come on, little helipilots. Come on out. So I guess they might not come out on uh, on sandbox mode here, which is kind of sad. But they come out about every 45 seconds or so. Um, they act as like their own special ability. And uh, the only thing is you don't have to activate it. The sad thing is, is they're not very strong. They only come out for a few seconds at a time, only add a little bit of popping power over here. They're not that great. I actually don't recommend you guys buying the, third, the fourth tier Comanche defense in most situations. But the redeeming quality is that the fifth tier is boss. We've got three extra Comanche commanders over here. There there was a glitch where you could get six Comanche commanders, but uh, uh, I think they fixed that. I think. But now if we send out like a BFB or something like... Oh, did not want to do that. If we send out a BFB or something like that, you can see we just annihilate this thing down to freaking nothing like that. Like, that is awesome. Compare that to the Apache Prime. Uh... This guy is just better. Here's a crap ton of BFBs over here, man. If we just annihilate these guys. Not only are we Moab shoving these guys back, we're taking down all the blooms inside and everything. So what we can do is we can actually do a quick little comparison. Let's do this guy against an Apache Prime. And uh, I think I can prove it to you guys that uh, the Apache Prime is not that great of a tower. Here's the Apache Dart Ship and the Apache Prime. Um, more expensive than the uh, Comanche Commander over here. I'm going to leave both these guys on Pursuit. I will end up getting this guy up to Faster Firing and Faster Darts, because that's what we're normally going to get. I'm going to get this guy up to Quad Darts and Pursuit, because uh, that's what we'd normally get. And we're going to leave both these guys on Pursuit, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out, um, how about 100 Bad Balloons, just to... Or, you know what, we'll, just, we'll do it like this. We'll do, a uh, 999 of these guys. And then we'll never reach our pop limit here. And we're just going to see what kind of pop count we get out of these things. Um, keep in mind that the Apache Dart Ship is better, or the Apache Prime is better against Moab class balloons, so that might play it into it just a little bit. But you can see the damage over here is is pretty insane. He's this guy's about 50% stronger than the Apache Prime just against these regular balloons right here. So let's um, once we hit 50, we'll hit about 50k over here, about 50,000, about 30,000. Now we're gonna send out a bunch of Zoma God class balloons, and uh, 
Uh, again, we are on pursuit, so I'm just gonna let these guys go to town for at least a little bit. And we're gonna see what kind of what kind of damage we're gonna get. Once we pop on, down into blues, though, I actually want to trade this out. So let's sell that thing. We got about thirty thousand here, and this guy got about fifty thousand. All right. Or wait, he went from fifty to eighty. This guy went from thirty to a hundred, about seventy thousand. So you can see the difference right there, man. Definitely a Moab popping power tower, not a balloon popping power tower. Uh, and you know, definitely interesting to see that happen over here, guys. Not only were we losing before, but we went to from losing to winning with this guy. Um, absolutely insane. So use the helipods in the correct way to make sure you're doing the best damage that you can do. As far as positioning goes, you guys probably know by now, anywhere you want. Usually you gotta try and put it inside the range of your monkey village to make things cheaper, but it doesn't matter if you throw them off in the corner, they can go and follow your mouse and everything like that. As far as targeting goes, um, if you're lazy, you can either lock them in place or get pursuit. If you're more active with your game, follow touch. And uh, patrol points are not bad, but I would prefer to just lock them in place rather than, than put them on patrol points in most situations. I feel like he's just slightly better at aiming if you just kind of lock him in the right place rather than put him on patrol points. Start missing with his darts and stuff like that. Um, as far as combinations go and what sort of heli pilots you should be getting, well, that's where it gets a little bit goofy. I actually don't know. Um, I personally like the quad darts with the faster firing and faster darts, or just faster firing. He's just a low tier, good heli pilot. If you're playing on alternate rounds or something like that, and Boab Shove is almost a requirement, you can try the sniper instead if you want to, or any of the other towers that do like good Moab stunage or good Moab damage against the banded or reinforced Moab class balloon. This guy's just amazing against the reinforced. He can take down a reinforced Moab too, man, if, because he, he stuns it forever. So it doesn't matter. Oh, not, 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 not none of them though. But uh, yeah, he can take down one of those um, with a breeze. If you are going for a higher tier heli pilot, uh, you can get the Apache Prime for Moab damage, and you can get the uh, uh, Comanche Commander for balloon popping power and or Moab popping power as well, but he doesn't do quite as well against the Moab balloons. If you just want a support tower, or if you want to move your towers around, you can always go for a special poperations, but honestly, he's more of a specialty than anything else. We probably won't use him in most of our games, unless we get crazy with our uh, weirdo chimp strategies or something like that, man. Moving our towers around into efficient and fun little uh, scenarios could definitely be fun for us. Or if we just want to get some extra lives, man. There's definitely nothing wrong with that. I should mention also that this guy d ends up deploying wherever your monkey ace, or your monkey, uh, your heli pilot actually is. So you don't get to like pick a spot, you just press the button where you want to drop him down and that's exactly where he's going to go. If this video helped you guys out at all, feel free to press the like button for me. If it didn't help you out or you think I did a bad job or you want to uh, let everybody know something that I did wrong, feel free to throw that information down in the comments below so we can all become better and more knowledgeable people. I would love that. I'd appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody else would too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, have a super duper delicious day.